In this After Effects tutorial, we're gonna be making fake user interfaces, fake stuff for fake screens. Let's do it. All right, so I got all my fake screens here, some retro future stuff that needs some retro future content. So I'm gonna start out by making a new solid, all right. And I wanna go with this screen right here. This will be screen one. I'll call this solid screen one. I'm gonna make it 1920 by 1080. It kind of matches that dimension. Perfect, let's scale this down a little bit so we can see what we're doing. And I'm gonna add a fractal noise onto this. Great, let's change the noise type to block. Cool, kind of looks digital. And let's bring the complexity down to one. All right, look at that. I'm gonna bring the contrast up a little bit more. And now maybe what I'll do is I will open up the transform here, uncheck uniform scaling, and maybe stretch this out a lot. So we kind of get these really wide blocks. That's kind of cool, something like that. And then maybe what we could do also is like animate this offset turbulence. So for over 10 seconds, it just kind of uh, rises up or down, something like that. We get this kind of scrolling effect. So it'll be something like this. That's kind of nice. And open up the evolution options and alt click on random seed and type in something like time times one. Now this will just cycle through that, kind of gives it a nice flicker. That is cool. And now let's get this pinned onto the screen. If we type in power pin, add this to that, and then we'll go ahead, move this a little more into position here, and we'll go ahead and just power pin this in place. We get all these nice little guides that pop up like this, and just go ahead and pin that on there. Bing, bang, boom and we're pretty much good here. And maybe one more thing we'll wanna do is add a tint to this so it matches the rest of our color palette. I'll put the black on one of these pinks and the white on our screen color. Screen one looks pretty good to me. Screen two, I think I wanna make some kind of radar. So let's go ahead and make a new solid here. We'll make this 1080 by 1080 because this one's more of a square here. Let's call this screen two. And I'm gonna go ahead and pre-comp this because I wanna add more layers into this. All right, so let's call this screen two comp, that is fine. Now what I'm gonna do to this is I'm going to add a grid effect here. I'm gonna add a little grid to our radar. We're gonna generate a grid that is cool. We can make this our pink color like this, maybe beef up the border. Now we wanna get this, since it's gonna be a radar, need it to be circular. So let's add a polar coordinates to this and let's crank it up. That's the wrong type. Switch it to that and now we have this circular radar and I think I want it to bleed across the edges so I will just scale this up and that looks good. You can see it's kind of blurry, but if we crank it to full res, it looks a little bit better, and that is great. Now what we need to do is create the kind of radar pulsing that comes around. So we're gonna do this using a shape layer. So what we can do is just grab our rectangle tool and draw a box here. Make sure that your fill type is set to radial gradient. And now let's draw a shape like this. All right, and I wanna change the actual color here to be both colors to be our uh, pink here or whatever color you want. So both to be the one color and then one of these colors, the opacity up here needs to be zero like this. So whichever color the edge here, we want it to fade out like this and that's great. And then I'm gonna open up the rectangle here, the rectangle options and um, if you grab onto the gradient fill here, go down to your start point and you start moving it around or the end point here, you could kind of um, wiggle it around like this, something like that looks a little bit better. All right, and you'll see where this is going in just a second. That's kind of a nice gradient. And then we will add onto this a radial wipe. All right, let's put the transition at something like right about here. 
about 90%. So we just get one little quadrant going and then I will animate the start angle. I will use an expression by alt clicking and type in something like time times negative 75 and that will just give it a constant spin here and that looks pretty cool to me. Now we need something to be found once in a while in one of these quadrants. So maybe when it gets to right here, we create a little ellipse or a star or something like that to be found. Change the fill type back to solid here. And then this can be animated with the opacity that will go from zero to 100 like this, zero, 100, then back down to zero every once in a while when it comes across like that. And every time it circles around, you can just copy and paste it like that. Boom, now you got a nice little radar blip like that. Now screen two looks good to me. Just don't forget to do the same thing we did before and pin it into position using a power pin. Now we got a lot going on on these two screens, so why don't we do something nice and simple in the middle. We'll just draw a line here and beef up the stroke a little bit, make sure we have no fill on. And why don't we add something like a wave warp to this, all right? Give this a nice little tall, wide wave going through. Something like that could be cool. Maybe we'll duplicate it once and change the type to noise and crank that up a bit like that. Change the color to one of our other colors like this nice little blue. Put it behind it and change the speed to be a little bit slower. And now we have this, uh, you know, whatever this wave could be. And screen number three is good to go. For screen number four, why don't we keep playing with lines? I'll go ahead and grab my pen tool. Let's zoom in here a little bit. Let's draw a line, something like this. All right, that could be cool. I'm gonna open up this drop down here, open up my contents like this, and let me go ahead and duplicate this one shape here with Control or Command D. Now we have two lines, and on the first one, the one that's below it, why don't I change this color to like a pink and make the stroke a little bit smaller? Now you can't see it because it's below it right now if you toggle on or off, but it is there, all right? And why we did that is so now, if we add a trim paths to this first path here, this top path, we can go ahead and pull in the top a little bit, maybe 20%, and the bottom a little bit, maybe 20%, and let's add a little expression to the offset. Alt click on here, type in wiggle, parentheses, maybe two comma 45, twice a second, wiggle 45 pixels or percent, whatever, and we get something like this. Now what we could do, grab both of these shape uh, content folders, whatever, group them, controller command G, and let's duplicate this, uh, control D, and nudge this over. Oops, make sure you have it selected, and move it, ah! Make sure you have it selected, this group, like that, all right? And duplicate this one, and move it over. And duplicate this one, and move it over. Do this a few times. And now since all of these have a wiggle expression on them, they're all just gonna wiggle a little bit differently. You can go in and edit those expressions if you want them even more different, but this is great for this little exercise. All right, screen four is done. Let's go ahead and for the last screen, let's get some cool digital text on there. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make a new composition. We'll call this screen five and 1080 by 1080 is good. That works for me. And let's go ahead and let's just make some big old paragraph text, the size of this composition. And let's just go ahead and type some gibberish in here and you know you got to have some cool roboto text or something that fits with your vibe here and what i'm going to do is drop down the text properties add an animator we want character offset and now we can animate what these characters are something that looks cool let's add a time expression to this time 
times one, and now these will all shuffle like that. Very cool, but let's push it a little bit further. Let's add another um, animator onto this. A fill color, RGB, open up the range here, and we could bring in the start a little bit. We could bring in the end a little bit like this and open up the advanced and randomize the order. Cool, now it'll be something like this, but we want these to shuffle around also so we can add a time expression to the random seed. And maybe if we do time times two, now it will shuffle at a different rate than the characters are um, changing. And it just feels a little bit cool like this. Now, if I wasn't on a time crunch right now, I would obviously make these colors match the rest of what we're doing, but you get the idea. So what I'm gonna do is just go ahead and drop this into our project as it is and we will pin this in place and actually one more thing we could do one of the advantages of this being paragraph text is we could make this a little bit bigger here add some more text gibberish into this and we could go ahead and animate this scrolling like this push it up there and then when we go back our text will be scrolling up a little bit slow but you could always make it faster and just like that, in just a few minutes, we have added a bunch of cool fake interfaces, graphical user interfaces, heads up displays, whatever you wanna call it. We have done it, we have added it to these screens. And if you like these kind of visuals, but you don't feel like making them all the time, check out my Vector Visuals Asset Pack for After Effects, which you can use in all of your projects royalty-free. It's got tons of cool visuals that you can customize and use however you want. All right, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye.